and to talk about camp. All right, everyone, we're going to get started in just a few more moments. Admire our beautiful camp here on the slide deck. All right, let's get started. So welcome, everyone. We're so excited to have you here with us tonight to talk about Camp High Sierra. Uh, really the best camp I can think of in the whole wide world. I'm a little biased. Uh, my name is Diane Betts. I'm the director of program here at the council, and I get to work with these wonderful people here. Um, and we're really excited to have you. I'm going to introduce two people on my team, and then they're going to take over for me. We've got Janet Fan. She is the person that you have been emailing with, working with. She is our amazing support person who does all of your registrations on the back end, make sure all of your payments go through and helps you with everything Tentaroo. So thank you, Janet, for joining us tonight. As well as we have Dylan Hendrickson. He is our camping director. He is making sure that everything is getting taken care of to make sure everything is polished and wonderful, supporting our camp director and our program director. He is uh, awesome, and I'm going to turn it over to him to talk more about Camp High Sierra. Take it away, Dylan. I'll introduce a couple of people, too, so let's keep the introductions going. I'll introduce Bruce. Bruce Lee, raise your hand or say hi. There we go. Bruce is the camp director. You will hear much from him in the presentation this evening, and hopefully you already know who Bruce is. If you've been to our camp before, you definitely do. There's also Nate Yugi. He's the program director. Uh, Nate will also be featured in tonight's presentation. We also happen to have Alex Parks, who's the new assistant program director, and Michael Rockliffe, who is the head commissioner. They're all on the call. Uh, they will all be involved in your camp lives this summer in various different ways. So let's jump into the presentation. Here we go. Uh, welcome to Camp High Sierra. Uh, hopefully most, if not everything you need, will be posted to the camphighsierra.org uh, slash CHS slash resources section. I always refer to this as the resources page. There are a lot of different uh, offerings here and mainly there for scoutmasters and leaders uh, and also youth prior to camp. This is where you're gonna find all of your different uh, encyclopedias and guides of information. So the 2023 leaders guide got posted uh, last week. The saga uh, of CHS primers and guides are posted there as well. All of the preparation lists and how to get ready for camp uh, have been posted there. We are working on getting our 2023 course offerings and the 2023 program guide ready, and those will be up by April 15th. Uh, and then also any of the required paperwork for 2023 is going to be posted to that section of the website as well. Uh, importantly, this will show the various things like the merit badge schedule and the opening classes. So we can move on to the next slide. Here we go. Evening, everybody. Um, again, my name is Bruce Lee. I'm the camp director for this summer. We want to go over some of the paperwork, but first of all, a little housekeeping for tonight. If you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll be monitoring those, and after each slide, we'll try to answer any questions that you have. Um, we're going to talk a little paperwork is how what's scouting without paperwork. So if uh, all adults need to be registered with the BSA, um, we will be checking everybody that comes to camp. So obviously to be registered, you need to do your YPT, your mandated reporting for California, and your live scan fingerprinting. Um, all youth that are staying over 72 hours need to have your medicals part A and B, and uh, also part C. If you're staying under 72 hours, we just need parts A and B. So if like an adult's just swapping out for two days during the week uh, or so, or three, they can just uh, present us with A and B, but everybody else needs to have parts A, B, and C. Next slide, please. All right, so we do offer a feature because um, one of the pinch points of going through camp is the review of the health forms to make sure that we have everything properly filled out. 
and that we have something uh, that we can refer to if there's anybody that needs it um, is the health form review. So the council, if you take your uh, troops set of health forms to the council, uh, two weeks in advance, they will review them and then transport them up to camp and they'll be there ready for you when you get to camp. Um, you cannot mail them. You Well, I guess you could mail them, but you can't email them or fax them. Um, also, we're going to need the shooting sports, even though it does say four copies on the shooting sports form. Uh, we only do need one copy. Um, we need the parents' commitment to transport. Um, that is, if some reason that the scout gets sick up at camp, um, we want to make sure that the parents are going to be around to transport the kid and get them back because we really don't have places to store the uh, scout at camp. We're not sure quite yet where we are on proof of COVID and vaccine. Um, we see that things are opening up quite a bit. So this, this one may drop off, but right now we just left it on from last year. So we'll keep you informed on that. All right, next slide, Dylan. So medical check-in. Um, one of the things we wanna make sure is each of your scouts and adults have their medical form, their shootings form, their commitment for pickup in their hands when they go through the health lodge. If by the time you get to the health lodge, you're trying to hand out to your scouts and everything, again, that takes more time and we're trying to streamline this process. We know it's tough and it's kind of tedious going through all of this, but it is very important that we have this paperwork and it will help us tremendously if you have it organized. So when you get to camp and ready for the check-in that each individual scout or scouter has these documents in their hand. Uh, make sure that everybody is immunized. Uh, the one that seems to get dropped off a lot is tetanus because it's only good for 10 years. So please make sure that everybody does have their tetanus. We are an old um, lumber mill and there are things coming out of the ground all the time and we hopefully nobody will get poked or prodded by anything, but we wanna make sure that everybody's immunized. If not, uh, you can go back into Sonora and get whoever needs it, uh, a vaccination there. In terms of medical, um, all of the troops are gonna be responsible for their own medicines. So we encourage you to bring all your prescriptions in the original bottles with the instructions on them. We will give you a box to lock uh, your medicines for your troop on in, and each troop will be in, responsible for distributing those medicines to your scouts. We found that that's much easier than trying to um, track somebody down that hasn't come up to the health lodge and uh, it just has worked better in the past. Now, obviously, if there's anything that needs to be refrigerated, uh, that can be stored at the health lodge and it can be distributed out of the health lodge. We do have a nurse there 24-7, uh, so that is no problem. If your scout has an allergy and has an EpiPen or a rescue inhaler, that should stay with the scout all the time, in a backpack, in their pockets, wherever. And that's one of the things that we'll call out when we're going through the health forms is we'll have a big red flag saying, you know, this scout has an EpiPen or this one has a rescue inhaler. Or if they're going on an outing, an overnighter, we want to make sure that we understand who has those type of special needs and that they have them before they go. All right, next slide, please. This is me. So we do a t-shirt pre-order for Camp I Sierra. And we work with a company that uh, helps us out and get shirts kind of specifically done by unit. And we have a couple of differences between this year's order uh, and last year's order. We have a longer order window, so we get to put in the order by May 10th this year. So that's a little bit longer uh, than last year because we're not dealing with the same uh, shipping constraints. The design that you see on the page is indeed the fantastic, spectacular wonderful new t-shirt design that Bruce and I worked on and slaved over in the t-shirt mines. Uh, it's a kind of, what is it, Bruce? It's a mile mark. It's a mile marker, mile marker or peak marker. So peak it's marker. got the latitude and longitude. It's got the, the elevation and uh, all the other things that make camp great kind of information stylized in the middle. Uh, and then we've got the ubiquitous saw blade around the outside. We are using a different order form. So we're going back to the form site. Last year was a little clunky. We tried to make things better. It did not make things better. So we're going back to a form site order. Please put in one order per unit. Uh, if 
you have to put in an additional order, please let me know, or I will have to reach out to the unit to consolidate uh, the various units. The sizing will be uh, by individual. So you're just going to go in and put in all of the different sizes that you want for the whole unit. Uh, and that's the group order. Uh, they will be available at camp during the check-in process. We will hand you over these swank fancy t-shirts. There's the base price is $20. If you are larger than extra large, like myself, uh, you get to pay the prorated fee. Uh, that is, we just pass that straight on from the company. That's how much it costs them to go up in size for each different type of t-shirt. Uh, and so that's the extra cost there. Uh, and then this year, because the price has gone up so significantly because of printing costs, we made it optional to get the troop number printed on the sleeve. So it's an extra $6 uh, to get the unit number printed on the sleeve of the t-shirt. If your troop does want to do that, they have to opt in by the whole unit. And the other change in this is that the printing company will only do it for a minimum order of 10. So if you do want your troop numbers on the sleeve, uh, you have to opt into that by a whole as a whole unit. And then you have to do a minimum order of 10 t-shirts, which hopefully if your whole unit's opting into it, you should be able to get to that 10 number pretty easily. The link right there is the posted link uh, for ordering t-shirts. I'm going to send that out in a updated email to the whole group here shortly. You can also click on that fancy swank QR code to start ordering them right now. And then we get to move on to Nate for the next slide. Dylan, there's a question about the shirts before we move on. Will the $6 for troop um, number be $6 for the unit order or an additional $6 per shirt within that order? So 20 it's, an, it's an additional $6 per shirt. That's why we've separated it out as an additional cost. We felt that that would be a significant barrier to a large number of units ordering uh, shirts as a group. And we wanted to make sure that they could either opt into that or opt out of it. Moving on to Nate. All right, hello everybody, I'm Nate, Program Director of Camp High Sierra. Uh, I wanna to talk to you about the Saga of High Sierra. Uh, this is uh, a way for anyone coming to camp to participate in furthering um, your experiences uh, at, our, at our camp uh, and um, remembering all the, the new experiences that you get. As a, uh, the Saga is our service organization. Um, it's, uh, it's got multiple ranks in it, so campers that come multiple years can rank up and up and up. Um, and this is, uh, uh, this used to be called the Tribe of Ice here. We've switched it uh, a couple years back. Um, so if you've been away from camp for a while and are coming back to it, that, that is the change. And that's one we made back in uh, 2020. Um, and so it's been a few years now we've been doing the saga and the new ranks are seeker, guardian, trailblazer, legend, and great legend. So, um, those that achieve that fourth rank of legend, uh, will, uh, be granted, uh, their own legend name and get to be memorialized in the book of legends. Uh, it's a big old tome that we have at camp. Um, and yeah, the, the, the focus is to, uh, try new things at camp and, and get some something to remember doing that for. So we signify accomplishments through beads um, and scouts will build necklaces or I've got my lanyard uh, that I wear um, and different colors for trying different things. So red for doing a campfire skit, blue for doing your swim check, uh, service projects, uh, skills of the day, or even just uh, exemplifying points of the scout law uh, can all earn you beads. Um, so really, really great activity. And <clears throat> like I said, this is, is for scouts, but it's also for any camper uh, that comes to camp. So adults welcome. I think we're good on that slide. Cool. Uh, moving on to uh, the general program offerings, um, we've got a couple new merit badges. Um, <clears throat> we're really expanding like the kind of trades area that we've got going on with welding. 
So we've got welding now, we've got electricity, and we've got plumbing uh, that are all being offered there. Um, <clears throat> so if you have scouts that have any interest in, in trades, uh, maybe like career aspects of that, or even just like the mechanically minded, want to take something apart and put it back together uh, type of, of scouts, uh, that's going to be a good program for them. Um, we've got an expansion to our open program. Uh, so in the afternoons, uh, we're um, <clears throat> uh, in a way encouraging scouts to not have their entire schedule filled up. And so everyone will have a hour free in the afternoon that they can um, spend as they please, uh, be that spending more time on the climbing wall or the shooting ranges. Uh, but we've also going to be expanding uh, drop in capacity uh, and uh, different activities each day that uh, scouts can come by and try out. Um, uh, uh, specifically like guided hikes, um, uh, STEM activities, uh, bringing in guest speakers, um, and, and kind of a different focus each day. And, and we'll have a, 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 a list of those activities uh, posted at the beginning of the week so you can kind of plan out what you want to do each day. Uh, we've also got uh, other really, really fun activities to drop into. We've got uh, cowboy action shooting uh, up at the rifle range. Uh, that is a program we brought in last year and it was pretty popular. So uh, bringing it back in uh, with more wild west <laughs> gusto. Um, uh, some of these activities, like uh, specifically like the shooting activities, um, do have age minimums. And those are posted for uh, signing up. Um, a lot of those are nationally mandated. Uh, some of those are more of just our general recommendations uh, to kind of make sure scouts are focusing on what uh, would be the most appropriate for their age range. Uh, yeah, and here's a, a fuller list of our age minimums. Um, some merit badges will have uh, some other specifications. Uh, I know like uh, the metal work says like able to lift uh, 20 pounds or so. That is a recommendation for a scout's physical ability. If they're a smaller scout and they'll grow up uh, later than, than maybe hold off until it'll be more appropriate for them to, to do. Um, but if there's anything like a, a physical uh, disability or, or limitations in that regard, uh, we can work with that. So just let us know and reach out. Okay. Um, and I think this is Bruce. Yep. All right. So um, we'll talk about Tentaroo in a little more in a, a bit, but Tentaroo is our program for doing merit badge signups. And some of our merit badges do have fees associated with them, like our uh, shooting sports to, to help pay for the ammo, or if you're going to go sailing up at Pinecrest to help pay for the transportation up there. All of that's going to be built into your Tentaroo. Uh, when you sign somebody up for a merit badge and before you come to camp you need to pay for those fees um, you can pay for them when you get to camp but we prefer that you do them before because i'm not going to have janet up there to help me take all these fees and money is not my thing of focusing on um, blue cards we do not use blue cards we are a digital uh, camp so at the end of the week, you'll get a printout of each of your scouts and if they completed or had a partial in a merit badge. And this year, we're excited that um, the company Tentaru we've worked with is now going to be able to export that directly into Scoutbook. And Kimberly, who's on this also, is going to be our council expert on this. So I'm excited for that, too. This is something we've been trying to get it to happen for many years. So. Um, we got that. So when you're arriving to camp, we have, it's a two and a half mile road from Highway 108 down into camp. It's, it's a dirt road, as I mentioned. Um, we can bring buses down there, but please carpool if you can. Um, we have had some troops that every parent brought their own scout and that just causes us such gridlock. You know, you're gonna end up having a very unpleasant unex experience uh, taking two or three hours trying to get into camp, drop off people and, and go back, excuse me, go back out. 
So uh, please carpool if you can. If you do have a bus, please let me know the week before you come to camp. Um, we'll have the contact information we'll send out. Um, very easy to do a bus, but we just need to know so we have room to, for the bus to come in and turn around and go back out. Uh, looks like this year we're going to actually be able to have campfires. Uh, for the last five years, campfires have been pretty scary up there. Uh, right now we're under about six feet of snow, so hopefully that will be a little uh, moisture up there and we'll be able to have campfires. But, you know, that's definitely guided by Cal Fire and the, the guidelines up there. Um, we do do family style dining. So everything is uh, uh, family style in the dining hall. You'll sit by your troop. And if you do have any food allergies or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to me again. And we can work with you on um, getting you the menu and understanding food allergies. We've dealt with pretty much everything I could think of. Um, I think the most extreme was the low fat vegan, which basically we gave them ice cubes. But uh, we will make sure that everybody eats. We also have a um, refrigeration unit and places to store food. So if you feel that you wanna bring your own food for people that have allergies and stuff, we're more than willing to be able to accommodate that too. All right, next slide. I think this is Dylan. It is indeed me. So uh, Merit Badge signups, they're going to be starting uh, the week of May 15th. So all signups, Every individual day, it's different weeks. They all start at 7 p.m. Uh, and we're going to have them spread throughout the week. So uh, what's important about doing these signups uh, is that you have one person coordinate in your unit uh, doing the signups. It will not work to have multiple people go on and trying to do the signups at the same time. That will result in you not getting the signups that you want. What you also want to do uh, is make sure that when one person is going in, they input one scout at a time and they input the important badges and then hit submit and then they move on to the next person. Uh, that is the way that you will not get caught with having inputted multiple individuals and then hitting submit and then maybe one of their badges is already filled up. So it invalidates all that registration <laughs> work that you just did. Uh, so if you look at these different days, uh, we have the different uh, weeks of attending camp. So if you're attending camp, Week one, uh, you'll be coming May 15th. Weeks two and three, May 16th. Week four, uh, May 17th. Week five, May 18th. Week six, May 19th. So uh, that's pretty simple. Uh, your login information should be the same as previous years, i.e. your Tenteru login information has not changed. Uh, but if for whatever reason, you no longer have access to your Tenteru account, please email Janet, email me, uh, we will get you back into your account. Uh, and if your unit leadership has moved away and not left you with this contact information uh, or the information on how to get into your account, we will be able to help you get back into that uh, as well and reset it. Uh, so uh, this is when we are getting prepared for all the fun that is talking about Tenteru online signups. Next slide. There we go. And into Tentru we go. So this is just a screenshot. There's a lot here. It's a little hard to see, I'm sure, especially if you're on a phone. But Tentru, that one of the things you need to do before those sign updates. So again, I want to make sure everybody understands that before you go and want to register scouts for merit badges, you need to put in their personal information for everybody. And this includes the adults. Um, there are some required fields in here that need to get filled out. Um, so please put those in, including the scouts' birth date and stuff like that. That's how we calculate if they're old enough to actually be in the class. Um, there are some boxes here highlighted. Um, we default to allowing photography pictures of your scouts as the default. If you do not want that, please select that to be uh, turned off. So we'll run a report at the beginning of each week uh, um, to make sure uh, if that's selected or not. And then the most important one, which I talked about a little bit with the food, is any special needs. So any serious allergies, dietary restrictions. Again, this is a report we run on a regular basis. We look at it to make sure that we're prepared for people coming to camp. Uh, you can still follow this up with an email and talk to me about it. Uh, I'll be the main point contact between the, the chef and myself uh, and you, I should say, 
but uh, please fill this out because this is what we will refer to. And if we have an emergency, this is another spot that we go back to get information about your scout to try to figure out, is there some information we don't know? Um, is if somebody's unconscious, heaven forbid, um, you know, we want to know as much about that scout as possible. All right, so Janet's going to help me a little bit here. Is there anything I missed on this slide, Janet? Um, that's basically it, Bruce. And um, make sure you enter all this um, participants. You know, when, when you log into your Tenderu account, you will see app participants. And click when you click on that, make sure you enter as, you know, as many, you know, as, you know, a lot of information as much as possible. So um, I think you have um, covered everything, Bruce. Okay. Um, again, we'll probably have a, a Tenteru class. So if people need more specifics on how to uh, run Tenteru, uh, we can do that too. So here's what it will look like once you go into actually registering for the class. So you can kind of imagine this like Amazon. Just remember until you actually check out that item is not yours. So when you're selecting a merit badge, you have to go through the next step that's highlighted down there at the bottom and actually check out to ensure that that merit badge is then reserved for that scout. We have limited number of spots for some of these classes, well, for all the classes. And once they fill up, we will take uh, some drop-ins and we'll have a waiting list, but not many. And especially if it's a safety type like archery is here, there's just so many we can take in archery. It's a physical limitation. So um, make sure that you check out but what you would do here is you would drive ar drag archery from the right-hand side to the left-hand side of your screen. Now, if you notice that archery says 141516, those are the qualifying rounds, the second. So it's the, the class is taught period one, and then the qualify is period four. Or if the scout wants to do it period one and period five, you select the second one, or if you want to do one and six. So again, Period one is the instructional and the afternoon is the qualify. Everybody has to take a qualify and this is the best way we found to ensure that everybody's actually qualifying for the merit badge. Now, one thing nice, if you select one and four and then go and want to do your next merit badges, all the classes being offered period one and period four will now disappear from the list on the right. So it will just show you two, three. If you decide that you want to change something and go to, let's say, instead of one four to one five to free up something period four, you just drag it from the left back to the list on the right, and then all the classes period four will show up again. And you can select one five to move back into the class. All right, next slide. So this is kind of what it looks like once you've built a list for classes on the left. Um, Again, what we recommend is there are some classes like metalworking and a few of the other ones that are um, high priority. So what you may want to do is actually go in and select that class for a scout, go through the checkout process, and then come back to that scout with some of the basic classes like archaeology or sit in the nation that don't fill up as quickly uh, is one way to do it. If you have more than 20 people in your troop, please let us know because uh, Janet, can you take a note on this? We need to break you into like troop A, troop B, because one person trying to do 40 kids uh, is a severe disadvantage to you trying to get all those kids registered for merit badges. So if we break you into two troops and let you register um, using two different people, it would be, it'll get you through the process much quicker. So now that you've selected all your classes for the scout, you'd hit next again. Let's go to the next slide. And this is where it will show the scout's name, the, the class is on the right. Uh, you can go back and edit those if you want, or you hit the checkout button. Now, um, the easiest thing I recommend is right above that checkout square is a button that says pay minimum required amount zero. So don't worry about paying the merit, each fees for each of the scouts as you check them out. We can we'll figure out all the fees at the end. Uh, otherwise, you'll be putting in credit cards every time you check out a scout, and you really don't want to be doing this. So again, put in uh, minimum amount zero and then hit the checkout button, and that will get you out of the system and actually ensure that those merit badges are saved for Bobby McBobby. Okay, what a clever name. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then you can go on to your next scout and select the next one in your roster. 
again, I would prioritize your scouts as the ones that have certain classes they have to get no matter what. Those scouts that are about to make Eagle that need to have swimming or they need to have sit in the nation. I kind of downplayed sit in the nation a few moments ago, but if that scout needs that to make Eagle and he's expecting to get it or she's expecting to get it at summer camp, you know, this is one of those important ones that you need to check that person out. So prioritize your older scouts that need certain things or specific merit badges. Unfortunately, there's no way for us to, you know, make this any easier or streamline. So this is kind of what, why we're giving you the recommendations. All right, next slide. Actually, is there anything I forgot, Janet? And also make sure, um, as Bruce mentioned, uh, make sure you check out. If you don't check out, your scouts don't get that class. So make sure you check out and go through the checkout, but you don't have to pay, um, you know, for each scout, a scout individually, but make sure you check out so that the scout has the class. So right now you could go and add, go to the next scout and actually add that next scout and add those merit badges. You would not secure the merit badges for Bobby McBarbie until you actually check them out. Um, when you're doing a whole bunch of scouts that have basic merit badges, you may want to do one or two before you check them out, but I would not do more than two scouts before you actually check them out. Um, there will be three or four of us that will be monitoring the merit badge signups each night and we'll be on, um, on the phone for support. So if you do have any questions, we'll be sending out a phone number to call and we can help walk you through this. Uh, we'll have access on our end to whatever you're doing so we can help you with this to make sure it goes as smoothly as possible. Um, to, and if we see that your cart is building up a lot of merit badges in there and you haven't checked out, and all of a sudden they disappear. Don't worry, that's probably us. We'll, we check them out for you just so you don't lose them. Um, we've just seen too many people not check out and get to the end of their scouts. And when they go and check out, merit badges have already been taken by somebody else that has checked out. And then, yes, you do need to place the place order button at the end after the checkout. It will take you through those. That's actually a combination of a couple of screens, but it will prompt you page by page to go and hit each of these buttons to make sure you're completely out. All right, I think uh, Dylan's up next. Yep, I am up next. And the next slide is about the adopt a campsite weekend. So coming up on Memorial Day weekend, we have the adopt a campsite event up at High Sierra. This is a great way for your unit to come up and familiarize themselves with the camp. Uh, hopefully do some work on different things that you'll actually be using this summer. Uh, if you want to do a special project in your campsite or in a specific program area, Especially this year, you're going to want to get a hold of me beforehand so we can talk about that. Uh, obviously, we expect to have a little bit more snow in camp, a little bit longer. We may have a little patch of snow here or there all the way through the Adopt Campsite weekend. Uh, I doubt it, but there's a, there's a small possibility. Uh, so we don't know what camp is going to be like yet uh, until we start getting into things. And that definitely means we know we're going to need some extra help. So if you have folks who are looking for some service hours, uh, looking for some camping nights, uh, and they want to get up and, and help Camp High Sierra and also get a chance to put their stamp on the camp. This is the best chance that they have to do that. It's only $30 per person, so adult or youth, uh, and we get to provide you a rocker, which I need to remember to order right now. Uh, but we have plenty of adopted campsite uh, activities, uh, and it's a great fun time. And we also have uh, mentioned there at the bottom, the Order of the Arrow ordeal that's coming up June 2nd through June 4th. Uh, the, the main reason we don't just broadcast that to everyone is you need to be registered with the Order of the Arrow or going through the ordeal uh, to participate in that event. But we will be doing service the following weekend as well. So you may get a chance to come out two different times, work on a whole bunch of the different projects for the things we're putting together this summer. Uh, we will be prepping, probably not doing much on, depending on how the weather treats us, but we'll be prepping some things for the potential observatory going up into camp in the future. Bruce, did you want to say anything about that? About yeah, um, this year more than ever, we definitely could use your help. Uh, adopt a campsite's a lot of fun. Usually what the troops do, my troop will be coming up and we set up our own, the campsite. We're in Arapaho every year. So we take a Arapaho and we take pride in setting up the tents and getting things ready for the campers that summer, including us week five. 
Um, as Dylan said, this is going to be is kind of a crazy year right now. I just talked to the ranger today. We've got six feet of snow. And on the top of that, the top eight inches of solid ice. Um, I have no idea if that's going to melt all in one day or if that's going to take, you know, two or three months to melt. We don't know what part of our camp looks like because it is so under snow, we can't even get to it right now. So it's going to be a challenge for us this summer. And we hope that we can get as many people up there to help us. And this really helps the staff. Um, instead of spending the first part of our staff development week setting up camp and getting things ready, uh, we can focus more on having a better program and a better uh, presentation of things. So um, we really do appreciate it. Uh, we'll have a, a great cook. David should be up there cooking again. And if you've ever been up there before, you know that the, the food is always excellent. You guys don't have to worry about cooking or doing dishes or anything like that. That's all taken care of without $30. Uh, if you do want to come Friday night or stay into Monday, we can arrange for that too. You just need to let Dylan know. And that email there, chs at svmbc.org. That's the one you can use to contact us all. We all get that and we can answer any questions. So that's one email that goes to every one of us. So. And then obviously if you're part of the BOA and you wanna, you're gonna be doing your ordeal this year, um, great place to do it. You know, we have a lot of projects as we said, and if you are already a member of the Order of the Arrow, uh, it's a great place to come up and help. And we'd love to have you up there. And we've had a lot of projects that have done by the OA. Uh, Dylan talked about the observatory that we're building. That's not gonna be ready for this summer, but next summer, but uh, the foundation for that has been donated by the OA. And we're going to be framing that up so we can get that cement poured this summer and start on the observatory itself. This is going to be probably a 12 foot diameter observatory. It's going to be a big one. So we had a, a major donor that came and donated a lot of money to uh, build an observatory. And we're going to be the only camp, as far as we know, in California that has an observatory. Rancho Allegro used to have one, but unfortunately it burned down when they had their fire a couple of years ago. All right, enough on that. Next slide. Questions. Questions. So Kimberly, have we missed anything in the? Uh, no, this group has been very quiet in the chat tonight. It's because they're all experts. All right. So if you want to unmute and actually ask a question, feel free. Is anybody out there? 